James Shremko here. I'm chatting with Corey Basaraba from growfastmarketing.com. Hey, Corey. Hey, James. Corey, we have uh, wonderful business chats about growing your business and getting great results, making more profit. Uh, you've been working behind the scenes with lots of businesses, building their machines, making it all work smoothly. But you've discovered a, an advantage that some customers have over other customers that really makes a big difference. Sometimes, I think you mentioned to me, can actually get you up to three times more output. And it's probably something that's not as obvious from the surface. And there's a wild variance uh, between every business that I speak to in this department. Want to share with us what that is? Sure. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is your marketing, if you're going to grow and you're going to be investing in ads and funnels, that there's a team required to get that result from start to finish. And so you're coordinating as an entrepreneur several people who each fill their role, they have a job to do, and if you can improve the performance of the team as a whole, you can dramatically increase the quality of your marketing and the results you're getting. And sometimes that's tricky for us because maybe we've got a contractor who writes our copy and then we've got an agency who runs our Facebook ads and then we've got someone else maybe who's looking at our data and you've got all these individual pieces. And when you look at any other team effort, team sports obviously are the most obvious one, right? A team that works together, that has high communication, that really knows how to work with each other can get so much more accomplished than a team that say it's brand new or that only talks to each other once a week concept of looking at your marketing team and finding ways to improve the performance of the team overall can really have a huge impact on how fast you grow. So what sort of tips would you have for someone who's trying to assemble that kind of team? And they probably have some of those pieces in place. And of course, there will occasionally be some resistance to a consultant coming in with some great ideas, you know, challenging the status quo, or in, in some cases, pointing out the obvious that the person who's installed in the business has been overlooking somewhat embarrassing to their pride, I imagine, as well. So you're going to have a bit of politics to fight occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've all been on the receiving end of some good advice that hurt. And so one of the first pieces of advice I give is to, to map out your process in a diagram. So most of my clients are buying traffic at some level. They're investing in Facebook ads. They're driving people to a funnel and they're converting. And I say, well, do you have a diagram of how that all works? And nine times out of 10, they don't. And so once you have a picture that you can look at, then you start connecting, okay, well, who, who on your team is doing which piece? And you start to get a sense of, well, how effective is that working from this flow to this flow? So let's say you've got a copywriter and you ask, the thing about a diagram is you can point to it and you say, what about this? And instead of trying to verbally describe things, it's incredible. It's like looking at the blueprint for your house and saying, this is the bathroom. This is where the door is going to go. How are we going to do that? And everyone can agree and they know what you're talking about. So when you have a diagram of your funnel and you point to it and you say, okay, well, how, how is it working now with the copy getting converted into design? And you can, you'll find out, well, it takes uh, a week. Okay, what if we could get that turned around 30% faster? How's it going with the designer passing it off to the web developers? You see, it's, it's a production line, and people in the creative fields, they don't have to think of themselves as maybe building a production line, but it's what it is. And so if you can take some of the manufacturing theory and look at how do we eliminate the back and forth, let's move everything down in one direction as much as possible, right? Let's make sure that there's communication between the copywriter and the designer and the developer, and everyone knows what's happening, then you just get a lot more efficiency. And you know, if your competitor is getting out five campaigns a month and you're getting out three campaigns a month, your competitor is going to win, right? It's like the person who can put out more great marketing, all else being equal, is going to have an advantage. And so just looking at how does your team function, taking some time to just sketch it out on a napkin and say, where are we hitting those roadblocks? Where are things slowing down? And you'll quickly see there's always a place to improve, whether that's hiring another copywriter or plugging someone else in. But if you don't have that big picture, it's very hard to troubleshoot and improve. So the most important thing is to map out your whole process, every part of the funnel onto one central point and then have everyone meet and agree on what that looks like and what their responsibility is within that. And then to talk about things like timeframes and realistic expectations. And yeah, some, and how can these, we improve it? And your team will come up with good ideas. And some of these people might be internal and some of them might be external. How do you communicate with them? Is there a preferred platform? Well, there's nothing better than face-to-face. -face. So having Zoom 
really works well. When you can get everyone on, you can see their faces, and then you can pull up your diagram on the screen and start talking about it and pointing it out. So when you're going to have a focus meeting where the goal is to improve how we get things done, having a, having a screen with the diagram and having everyone on that meeting interacting is probably the best way to do that. Great. Recently, I noticed Slack introduced a feature where you can pull in external contractors to your team, which is great. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to join their Slack or uh, toggle between them. And we created a channel for our Facebook marketing person and uh, for our API programmer and um, for our uh, funnel developer. And it's made a huge difference being able to have everyone in just one place. So it's a good feature. And uh, I I love this whole concept of team. I mean, team is the strength of my business, the the amount of content we publish. And it's really important that several people in the team are able to cover for each other because you know, everything can come unstuck when someone's away or sick or something unexpected happens. And if there's one thing we know about life, unexpected things are going to crop up. Um, we should expect them. And yes. it's also good if the visionary founder can communicate what they're trying to do in the clearest possible terms, right? Sometimes it's a bit vague or they they tend to throw new ideas on the pile every few days after they get back from their latest mastermind and they got this new change in direction or they want to scope creep the original project so often that the core of it just gets completely transformed whilst no one really realized that. And I think that happens on buildings as well and websites. When you watch a seasoned entrepreneur do their work, right? It can be a thing of beauty. They step into a situation and they're immediately, okay, what are we trying to accomplish here? What's the goal? Who's doing what? And they know how to look at the big picture, identify the pieces and help fix the problem, right? Someone who's brand new, they're more easily distracted, they're more easily influenced. And it's about just developing that knowledge that the right thing to do is make sure that we have a clear vision, right? That make sure everyone's working on the same thing. And, you know, you're the godfather of internet teams, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and you see the results of it when you get a team that works well. So there's a lot of conversation around how do I hire? How do I train? This is really recognizing that your team as a whole can outperform any individual. There was a quote in a book that I love called Scrum, and Scrum is well known. But the book, he talks about you can improve performance. You can coach someone to get maybe a 10 to 30 percent improvement in individual performance. But if you look at a team, you can he's seen 200 to 300 percent improvements in how a team can perform over time. Right. Because you're multiplying those improvements across everyone on the team. So if everyone improves five percent and there's 10 people on your team, you get that compound effect. So it's an interesting mindset to realize that if you have a team of people and you learn how to tune that team, you end up with a bigger output than if you just coach one or two superstars. Totally agree. I mean, with my team coming up to 10 years now, I have always factored that they're going to improve in 10 percent each year. So in 10 years, they're going to at least double their performance. But I actually think in my case, the team's gone well beyond that. Um, The other technique that I deploy quite often is if I task someone in my team up with a new project, I will then not give them another project until they complete the first one. It's very tempting as a business owner when I I get a new uh, idea or whatever to just dump it onto the team. But if they've already got stuff, that's kind of like sending them into a Japanese restaurant to have a feast and then as they're halfway through the entree, you, you pull them out and say, hey, let's, let's go to the Mexican over there. And then, and then they, they, they order some burritos and then you say, hey, oh, hang on. Uh, the French has got some great pastries and they're not going to get a good meal happening in that scenario. So just le- leave them be until they've completed the first one and then give them the next one. So I'm very conscious as the business owner not to overload them. And um, one thing I do ask them to report on at the end of each day is just give me a color. Is it green, yellow, or red? Mm. And from green, yellow, or red, I can get a sense of if they're maxed out or they've got infinite capacity. You know, if they're on yellow or red, I'm not going to go near them with any new stuff. (laughs) Like, let them just get through what they've got. Uh, In fact, maybe we should even hire someone to help them out and or load balance so that the next day we'll be talking about who can help out this team member because they're maxed out. And I'll look for someone who's green and see if we can pair them up. But then over time, what happens is they automatically do that. They become like a load balance mm-hmm. server and they share their tasks around. They sort of level out the overwhelm amongst the team according to their abilities as well. 
And the other mm. tip that I'll give on this topic is to let people lean into the things they particularly enjoy. If you've got someone in your team who just loves building the web pages or just loves writing the copy or just loves running ads, like lean into that. Don't force people to do things they hate because they're probably going to do a crappy job of it. Uh, you know, and, and we've all worked in a job we didn't absolutely love. For me, I, I could list too many. <laughs> but one that really comes to mind is when I was digging out an in-ground pool in the back of a house that was in a very hilly area. They couldn't put a backhoe or a crane into there. So I had to dig it out with a, with a shovel. And uh, it, took a oh long, you know, it took a long time. So I didn't love that job. And I don't know if I'm even that good at it, but, just, but it was uh, a tough. So put people in roles they love and um, communicate well with them and be respectful of their limits. And you should have a great team. This is a good topic. Hey, if you um, have a team and you want to get someone to come in and help out, get more traffic and tune up your funnel and look at all the data and see what's going on, get in touch with Corey, growfastmarketing.com. 